David was 34 years old. His wife, Susan, was 32 years old. They come to you because they are about ready to purchase the very first house that they ever had. And they come to you because you are a real estate attorney. And they need your help. They want you to do the real estate transaction. And so you set up the closing to take place four weeks later. Four weeks go by, and now Susan comes into the closing, and she's a bit distraught. What's the problem, you ask? Well, my husband had a massive heart attack two weeks ago. He's in the coronary care unit, and I don't know if he's going to live. What do you do as the real estate attorney to help Susan with her problem? And you ask her, what's the problem? She tells you a story where she believes that her husband had been to her cardi his cardiologist and complained of pain, complained of chest pain every couple of weeks. And they tested him, they evaluated him, they worked him up, and they told him, don't worry, just follow up in a couple of weeks. Before he had an opportunity to follow up again, here he is, he has a massive heart attack at age 34. He was a top earner in his mortgage company. What do you do as a real estate attorney to now help Susan when you think that there's a suggestion or the possibility that there may be a valid medical malpractice case? How about this scenario? You handle workers' compensation matters. Someone comes to you, they were injured on the job, and now, during the course of discussing what happened to them, you learn that this individual was in the emergency room getting stitched up. And during the course of sewing your arm up, the doctor somehow caught the nerve that controls part of the movement and sensation in the arm. And now, as a result of the doctor cutting that nerve, this individual no longer has movement or sensation in a good part of the arm. What do you do as the workers' compensation attorney now when you believe that there was a clear violation of the standard of care in the emergency room and you say, hey, wait a second, I'm just a workers' comp attorney. Don't ask me, I have no idea what to do. I'm just a real estate attorney. Go to somebody else. I'm gonna to suggest to you that during the course of our discussion this morning, I'm gonna provide you with information that will revolutionize the way that you practice, practice law. I'm gonna provide you information that will dramatically help the way that you communicate with your clients. I'm going to show you and give you information this morning that's going to help you dramatically become educated, knowledgeable, so that now when your ideal client and consumer comes to you and tells you about a problem, you can now, with an educated mind, ask them key questions, find out from them exactly what went on, and then give them great information because you know what's going to happen? They are going to look to you as the go-to resource for all things legal you are going to be the person who can solve their legal problems. What about this scenario? You're having a problem with your computer, and maybe you have the ability to call up the computer IT guy who works for your firm, or maybe you call up a computer repair guy. And while he's coming into your office and fixing your computer, you start chatting with him. And during the course of chatting with him, you learn something dramatic and tragic happened to him. What happened? My dad died recently. Really, I'm sorry to hear that. What happened? And now what happened? Turns out his dad was going in for surgery and was on blood thinner medication. And before the surgery took place, they took him off the blood thinner medication. Surgery went fine, but two days afterwards, his dad suddenly dies. An autopsy is done. And for those of you who don't know, an autopsy is a clinical examination by a doctor known as a pathologist to determine what was the cause of death. And in this case, the cause of death turned out to be a massive blood clot to his dad's lungs, known as a pulmonary embolus. In this case, it was a saddle embolus. And now, you ask him, so what's the problem? He tells you that he thinks that his dad should have been put back on that blood thinner medication in order to prevent that blood clot from occurring. What do you do? You handle transactions. You handle mergers and acquisitions. You handle finance. What do you do to help solve this gentleman's problem when now you think there may be the possibility that they have a valid medical malpractice case? You don't want to simply say, I have no idea what to do. Go call somebody else. That's not why you're here. This morning, you're going to learn great information that literally will help you revolutionize the way that you practice. And I guarantee you, 
Every single one of you will encounter people during the course of your legal career, during the course of your lives, where you will interact with clients, friends, family, people you meet in town, who will tell you their stories of tragedy. They will tell you their stories of woe. And here you are as an attorney who does not handle medical malpractice. What are you going to do to help these folks? By the end of our discussion today, you're going to know exactly what to do. So come join me on this brief journey as I share with you some incredible information.